Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about constraints. Constraints, uh, it, constraint is a very useful keyword that allows us to group all the keys such as primary and foreign key and other constraints at the end of the table definition but within the column list instead of putting these constraints in line with the column definition. Now this approach helps us quickly figure out what the constraints are for a table and also it is a way of organizing the constraints is a, in a very specific way. Uh, this grouping can include primary key, foreign key, and other constraints as you, deep, uh, as you dive deeper and deeper into SQL. So we have this code from our previous lectures. We have been building on top of this code. Um, now, the way that we can include constraint is that, let's say we want to remove this primary key, which is a constraint, and let's put it at the end of the... Uh, at the end of the query so we know that we have constraints and how they actually work so in here I'm just going to provide a comma I'm going to come down and I'm going to say constraint constraint and then below now the constraint is going to require a constraint name so we are going to say student ID what is the, the type of the constraint? It is a primary key. So it is a best practice to write primary key to specify the type of the constraint within the name of the constraint. So if this were a foreign key, we would say F key for foreign key. And then we would say student ID. Because it is primary key, we are just going to say PK student ID. And what is the type of the constraint? We are going to say primary uh, key. So we need to remove it from here. Let's remove it from there. Perfect. And then what does what does this belong to? Which column does it belong to? It belongs to the student ID column. Perfect. So if I run this, of course, you're going to get an error. So I'm going to drop this table for now. Drop now. Perfect. Let's run this. There we go. And we have basically created a table. Let's uh, reload this page. Let's go into settings. And you can see that we basically have our previous settings. So we have not null, two not nulls for first name and last name, and a primary key for which not null is going to be default for the student ID. So this is a better approach than what we had before. The reason for this is that as you create more and more complicated tables, having all these constraints at the end of your uh, table definitions will be a lot more readable and a lot more helpful. And this is, of course, like a, the professional way of writing SQL queries and SQL commands. Uh, that's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.